Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we're excited to be doing this demonstration of uh, CyberQuery, uh, which is a reporting and dashboard solution for Sightline and CSI. It's uh, proven to be very easy to use, fast, powerful, and inexpensive. So uh, what I'd like to do, my name is Jim Mon, and I'm from Cyber Science Corporation. I'm gonna be doing the demonstration today. Uh, we're going to go through a handful of PowerPoint slides and then just jump right into the, uh, the software. And uh, if you like what you see in the demonstration today, there's going to be a survey that will be sent to you. And you can either request copies of the slides, you can request a, a link to the recording of this uh, demonstration, or you can also request a free evaluation copy of the software. So uh, whichever uh, kind of fits your needs, just let us know and uh, we'll get that information to you. So what we're gonna do is we go through, uh, we're gonna kind of follow the following agenda. So we're gonna talk about typical customer requirements, uh, especially when it comes to people that are using Sightline or CSI. And by the way, I sometimes will use those terms interchangeably. Our software works the same whether you're on-prem, site line 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way back to Cymex 4. So any version of site line on-prem we support. And it works the same with CSI in the cloud. And I'll talk about the connection to the cloud as we go along. Uh, but if I use those terms interchangeably, hopefully that doesn't confuse anybody. Uh, but the, again, the software supports any version of site line including multi-tenant cloud-based uh, versions of CSI. Okay, uh, we're gonna be talking about typical customer case studies. Uh, we'll go through the software and we've just recently gone through a name change. The software used to be called Enterprise Cyber Query uh, or ECQ, we've now changed it to CQ or just Cyber Query. But if I slip up and say ECQ or Enterprise Cyber Query, again, it all means the same thing. Uh, we'll try to save most of our time for showing you the software and again, how it works with good old Sightline or CSI. And then we'll talk about the next steps. And again, the next steps are pretty simple. If you want the slides or if you want a link to the recording or even a link to download the software, uh, we'll, we'll send any of those to you. Uh, and as, as we go along through this demonstration, uh, if you have any questions, I uh, can't take questions live, but there is a little Q&A box where you can type in a question. And as I see those come up, I'll try to answer those as we go along. So again, just type them in that Q&A section and we'll try to answer them as they come. Okay, uh, typical requirements. So when we talk to people uh, and typically people have you know, got to the point where they've said, hey, we've looked at other tools out there recommended by Infor or non-Infor type people. And we're really looking for something that is gonna be able to help us. Uh, and here's what they usually are asking for. The number one requirement is people are saying, hey, I need easy access to either cloud-based CSI or on-prem site line, or maybe it's CSI combined with um, CPQ, or maybe it's on-prem site line combined with JD Edwards or SAP. Uh, CyberQuery can access data from any data source, whether it's in the cloud, like CSI or Salesforce, or whether it's on-prem, like Sightline or JD Edwards or SAP or Oracle or Bon or LN. Again, CyberQuery can access them all, and it can access all of those applications and databases simultaneously. So we've got some customers that are running old version six of Sightline and combining data uh, with Sightline nine, all on-prem. We've got people that are running in the cloud that are combining data from Salesforce and CSI. So uh, any combination you want to point at the software at, we can access. So number one requirement, easy access. That's what we're gonna talk about first. We'll also talk about what can you do once you've got access, all kinds of reports, charts, analytics, and BI, including things like outputting data to Excel or PDF or HTML, as well as scheduling and the email distribution of all of the above. Again, <laughs> whether it's a report in Excel, PDF, HTML, a CSV file, you name it, you can do it all with CyberQuery. 
We're going to show you a bunch of drill downs where users can start with a high level dashboard and go click, 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 click to where they finally get down to some actionable level of information. Uh, the other thing we're going to talk about uh, and that people ask for is the ability to do some powerful reporting. And the nice thing about CyberQuery is it does not run out of gas. So if you need to do complicated reporting, CyberQuery is your tool. Whether it's uh, an income statement, a balance sheet, a bill of material, a bill of lading, uh, all kinds of sales analysis, you can do it all with CyberQuery. Now, in a typical sightline on-prem environment, probably 80% of your data is going to come directly off of real-time production data access. The other 20% will come out of ECQ data marts and cubes. But again, with CyberQuery, we can access them at all. And with the, the CSI cloud environment, we've actually built a mongoose slash uh, IDO interface uh, directly into CSI to pull the data back and load it into our high performance hold files. Uh, and we'll talk about it more as we get into the architecture, but uh, again, the, the, app, the access to data whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, is fast. And we'll get into more details when we, when we get to the architecture slide. Okay, we'll also cover dashboards. And then everybody asks about the pricing. So we're going to cover the pricing as we go through the session today. Okay, starting off here, here's a list of just some of the better known customers using CyberQuery. We've got big guys like 3M and Siemens and little guys. Uh, I shouldn't say little. I mean, Stingray Boats was our first CSI in the cloud customer. But we'll talk about uh, some things that the Stingray Boats did. But other sightline customers would include Sportsman Boats, uh, Air Tractor, Dayton Phoenix, uh, Active Minerals, Ulrich, NIC Global, Genesis, uh, Radius Aerospace, um, Triumph. And we, we've got a lot of people. We've got over 250 sites uh, using CyberQuery with either Sightline or CSI. Uh, and just to start off real high level, as I mentioned, Stingray Boats was our first multi-tenant cloud customer uh, using CyberQuery. And it's kind of an interesting story. Um, we had talked about supporting the cloud for probably about a year. And finally, the IT manager Stingray Boats said, okay, Jim, I'm tired of waiting. And he re actually reached out to uh, uh, the president of our company and said, hey, uh, I want to get CyberQuery. And they said, are you really serious? And he said, yes. So we said, okay, we're gonna do it. So we built the interface. Uh, we've been supporting CSI now since really about the first of this year. And we've had lots of people come to us asking for the software. Uh, and so things are going great in that environment. But here's a report that Stingray gave us as kind of a challenge during what we call the, uh, the test drive, the free evaluation period. They said, okay, we've tried to do this on, with other tools that are on the cloud that you can probably all name, the tool couldn't do it. Can you do this? Basically, this is a report showing orders, you know, by customer uh, with the whole color, the bottom color, interior color, all of that. But the real complexity of the report is over here on the right, where it's showing, okay, this is the date when this particular job either completed or is scheduled to go into a particular work center. So to do this, we had to obviously recursively join back into the job route table or the job JRT schedule table multiple times to get status as well as schedules. But again, things like this, you can do very easily in CyberQuery and you can't touch them with, uh, with other tools, whether they're in the cloud or on-prem. Here's another example report we do for a CSI customer. This is what they, this customer calls their line of balance. Um, it shows by part number, you know, open, you know, quantities on hand being, you know, any backlogs, but then it goes out for the next, in this case, 26 weeks and shows any week where the expected inventory level is negative. Negative values show up in red, positive values show up in green. But again, complex reporting is something we do with CyberQuery all of the time. Uh, here's a reference from the, the people at Independent Can. Uh, Dave from Independent Can sent us this, this email and said, the addition of CyberQuery helped us rescue our implementation of Sightline. Our associates were ready to abandon the project because they were not able to access their information easily. The data was in the system, but they could not see it in the formats they wanted. 
CQ permitted us to bridge the gap and drive deeper system acceptance. We are now able to leverage all of our information for faster and more accurate decisions. So just a great reference from Independent Can. Uh, why did they choose CyberQuery? Number one, uh, CyberQuery allowed them to consolidate data from multiple sites. Uh, they could also automatically schedule emails to all of those executives, and those emails would have dashboards pertaining to the uh, functional area of those executives, and these run automatically at 6 a.m. Uh, ease of use and something fast, and CyberQuery is both of those. They were looking for something where they could train the department users, and then those users could write all their own reports. They're looking for a replacement for manual consolidation. And again, CyberQuery does that. And then finally, they said down here, ability to deliver on promise. So if they promised a user a particular report or dashboard, they knew they could deliver with CyberQuery. Uh, last bullet they put in here actually said cheap. They were looking for something cheap. Uh, we asked them to change it from cheap to be cost effective. CyberQuery is very cost effective. Um, Here's a, an example of a report from one of our customers that's using CSI, uh, Excel for the corporate budget, and then Salesforce in the cloud. So this particular chart is showing uh, what was booked in Salesforce, what's been uh, put into CSI, and then the corporate budget, just so users can see the, the difference. And if you look at October, you can see, okay, there's a big difference between what the salespeople shows being closed in, C in Salesforce and what was uh, actually booked into, uh, uh, sales, uh, into CSI. So a user can look at this chart and say, okay, what the heck's going on here? They go click on any month and now CyberQuery will drill down and show in detail, here are orders in Salesforce that have no corresponding, uh, I'll say booking in CSI. Here's a booking in CSI without any corresponding sales order in Salesforce. This fourth group is kind of what you'd expect to see where you have uh, a sales order in Salesforce, a booking in CSI, and the variance is a dollar. Uh, but again, with CyberQuery, let's you go back and forth between various systems or look at multiple systems simultaneously to see exactly what's going on and kind of the relationship between the two. Okay, another uh, dashboard that we did for the guys at NIC Global is this one called the efficiency dashboard. The operations manager came to us and said, hey, I'd like to have a dashboard where with just a blink of an eye, I can see if I've got any issues out on the shop floor. So he kind of came up with this idea of the stoplights. Uh, a green stoplight means no jobs over standard. A yellow stoplight means one job over standard. And then a red stoplight means multiple jobs over standard. So with this dashboard, the operations manager can look at it and say, okay, I've got an issue in the turret group. They go out and click on turret and the system drills down and says, okay, within the turret group, here are the individual work centers. And again, whether they're red, green, or yellow, they can then click on a work center and drill down and see, okay, for that work center, here are the open jobs and are they red, green, or yellow? They can then click on a job and drill all the way down to see who are the people logging time against that job and are they over or under the standard in terms of minutes. Now this dashboard was so successful, they ended up putting it on a, on a touch screen monitor out on the shop floor. And this dashboard is set to refresh every two minutes uh, so they can see if any of these lights go from green to red or yellow to red or whatever. And again, because it's on a touch screen monitor as people walk by, they can come up here and just with a greasy finger, they can go tap, tap, and tap to drill down to see the information they need to see. Okay, so enterprise cyber query is really designed around, I'm gonna say six key areas. Number one is ease of use. Whether the user's an executive clicking on a dashboard, an end user who's dragging and dropping fields to build a report, or a power user who wants to be able to slice and dice and drill down for, through data, or even a programmer who wants to look at the code behind all the pretty screens. So with CyberQuery, user can work at any level they choose. Uh, second bullet is power. Any report you, you can dream of doing, you can do in CyberQuery. So the software is not gonna run out of gas. I've been with CyberScience over 15 years now, 
And I've never seen a report we could not do. Um, so again, power. Third is performance. Cyber query is fast. Uh, it's a server-based solution, and that server can be local. It can be in the cloud. It can be wherever you want it to be. Uh, On-prem, uh, reading real-time data, cyber query is going to read between 40 and 140,000 rows a second. Uh, reading data out of the cloud, it's even faster because we actually bring that data back to our, our are what we call high performance hold files or QDBs. And out of those QDBs, you can read millions of rows a second. But it is server-based, which makes it very easy to control security, share reports, uh, and just makes, uh, makes it easy access. Uh, and when it comes to servers, CyberQuery can run on any Windows, Unix, or Linux box. Uh, so whatever you might have available. Okay, fourth bullet security. With CyberQuery, users can secure data at the site level, at the database, all the way down to the table, row, and even column value level. So site A can only see site A data, B can only see B, and corporate can see all sites. Uh, or if you need to do security by sales rep, where a given sales rep can only see his or her sales, you can do that as, as well with CyberQuery. Uh, fifth bullet cost, you can license the software any way you like. You can buy it outright on a perpetual license. You can license it annually or month to month. And because so many SightLine and CSI customers have been burned by other reporting tools in the past, most like to start with the monthly subscription and then they'll upgrade to the annual or the perpetual plan. To talk about pricing for just a second, uh, the standard kind of the average package price for SiteLine, uh, including all the server software, the connections to SiteLine, and five developers, uh, five runtime, five launchpad users, uh, the Excel add-in, which I'll show you here in a second, that package runs around $1,100 a month. Actually, it's $1,099. Uh, and then you can add more users as you need. So the average on-prem SiteLine customer probably spends I'm going to say $1,300 a month. So it, it kind of falls in that range a lot. Spend less. And we do have smaller licenses if you don't need five developers. And of course, the pricing goes down for those. But people will tell you the software works. It does what we say it does. And we've got very happy customers. As a matter of fact, if you've talked to any of our customers at Sun, they'll all tell you it's a great software and they can't imagine uh, running Sightline. Uh, or CSI without cyber query. Okay, next is a few sites we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through very quick because they're just screenshots. Here's a screenshot showing uh, reports broken down by site. Uh, each of these sites is a separate database in a separate country. You do see we do support multi-byte characters if you need to do that. Uh, not only can we read across multiple databases and consolidate the data, we can read across multiple modules within SiteLine. Uh, and consolidate the data. So with SightLine, you can enter an order into the CO tables. You can also enter it as a field service contract or as a field service service and repair order or as a project. And again, with CyberQuery, you can net all that data together. Uh, and this is broken down. Each of these columns, that those are unit code twos for this particular customer. So again, this is a nice SightLine report. But again, users just click to drill down. Uh, here's an example of a site line income statement, you know, current period, percent of sales, year to date, prior year, budget. But again, a user comes in just with a browser and all they do is click. And as they click, they can drill down by ledger account. And again, they can click again and see, okay, what are my finalized transactions for this particular ledger account for this time period? They can export to Excel or PDF or HTML just by clicking. But again, all the user needs is a browser. So if your users have Internet Explorer, Internet Edge, Firefox, Chrome, even Safari, they're ready to go. So if you got people walking around with iPads or you know, any kind of notepad with Chrome or whatever, uh, they're good to go. They can log in and they can access the data that they've been, they've been given permission to see. They can even build reports from any of those browsers. Okay. Now, as you as you 
build a report and you choose to share that report in CyberQuery, you publish it to the launch pad. Now this launch pad is completely customizable by you. So your own logo, color schemes, graphics, tree structure over here on the left. And I'll show you that as we get into live software. But reports can be either very simple and static or they can be very dynamic. This report's fairly dynamic where you have a selection window over here on the left and a user just clicks. And what they click over here is going to define what they see in the main body of the report. They can also resort this report by clicking on a column header. They can output the PDF or Excel, or they can drill down through the report just by clicking on a, a customer number. Okay, we've also got a great Excel add-in. We don't just print to Excel as if it were a sheet of paper. Uh, we actually output maxes and mins and totals wherever possible. We've also got a great Excel add-in. Now, I put together this little spreadsheet uh, because I'm an accountant and I like Excel. Uh, and what I've done here is this Excel spreadsheet has three sightline reports in it. This blue data, the green data, and the gray data is all coming out of sightline. Uh, these charts are just good old Excel charts. Uh, these light yellow fields are the input fields that drive these reports. And these bright yellow fields are calculations that take this data you know, from sightline and do whatever kind of uh, lift or forecast or whatever you might need to it. But again, the Excel user can sit in Excel, pull in reports and do whatever kind of uh, forecasting or modeling uh, the user might need to do. Uh, and they do it in a very safe, fast and efficient environment. Now I see a question came in about what versions of Excel do we support? Now we can output data to pretty much any version of Excel all the way back to the version four of Excel. Uh, for the Excel add-in, it does require Excel, Excel 2003 or above, okay? CyberQuery also supports all kinds of barcodes and QR codes and graphics. Uh, here's an example of a costed and indented bill of material. Here's a bill of material with a routing on top of it. And here's some sample dashboards with trend lines or bullet charts. Uh, bullet charts are a lot like a gauge, but they take up a lot less real estate on your screen than a gauge would consume. For example, if you look at revenue, you can see we're at $95 million and we're ahead of target, that vertical bar is target. And we're in the good area. That light blue is good, medium blue is satisfactory, bright blue is poor. And if we're only in the poor area, you see a little bullet up here. Again, that's why they call it a bullet chart. But again, a user can drill down by clicking on any of these bars or these labels to get more levels of information. Um, when it comes to dashboards, we support pretty much any chart type out there. And again, users just click and drill down. Uh, in the dashboard, you can also have a security level where California sees California data, or Colorado sees Colorado or Arizona, Arizona, but or you know, Western region can see all of the below, or corporate can see everything. So again, you can set that up uh, in the dashboards if you need to. Uh, you can also use bubble charts. This is a bubble chart imposed upon a, uh, a map of the country. Uh, you can also set up what we call uh, a heat map. And this is broken down by county, just showing sales by county. Here's an example of a scorecard with red, yellow, green, purple lights. Uh, here is a, uh, okay, here is kind of the one technical slide in the presentation. And I, th and I'm think, and I think this is going to answer some of the other questions that have been asked. So cyber query is a dictionary driven environment. We have a utility that we call the Sightline toolkit. It works the same whether you're on an old version of Sightline or the latest version of CSI in the cloud. But basically what it does is it goes out and looks at your Sightline environment and builds this dictionary automatically. This dictionary contains things like all the native names, as well as the user-friendly table and field names for every field and every table in Sightline, including all of your custom tables and custom fields. So those get loaded automatically and they can be refreshed anytime you like. The system also goes through and figures out all the joins between all the tables. And that's really key because that's what makes it possible for end users just to click and drag 
CyberQuery figures out the joins between the various tables. Users never have to write SQL. Uh, right out of the box, the system handles multiple sites and or databases and or applications. Uh, you can have multiple dictionaries. Uh, you might have one for CSI, one for Salesforce or in for CRM, and then a third one that combines them all together. Uh, it makes no difference to us. The other nice thing about the, um, the dictionary is it also goes through the application for ex and, and creates new fields where appropriate. For example, SiteLine likes to use a timestamp uh, for every date. So CyberQuery automatically creates a sister field for every timestamp that is a date. Dates are just easier for the accounting people, the sales people to deal with. Uh, you know, timestamps are great for manufacturing people that care about the hour, minute, and second. Uh, and, um, you know, when the job starts and stops. But again, the accountants, the sales people don't like that. So they can deal with a date, which is much easier to deal with. Okay. Um, we also handle all the enumerated and text fields and notes fields within Salesforce. Uh, we also uh, can access pretty much any database out there. And we always use the, the lowest, most efficient level possible for any given database, whether it's SQL, Progress, Informix, DB2, Oracle, any other ODBC data source like Excel or Access or MySQL. Uh, we also support flat files and index file structures. Uh, the other thing about the dictionary is you can define as many what we call viewpoints as you want. So you can have a viewpoint for the salespeople where they see exactly zero sightline tables. Everything is, uh, you know, all they see are cyber query data marts and cubes. They don't see any of the native tables. But you might have it set up where, uh, you know, the purchasing people see five or 10 tables. Finance might see 100 but they don't have to deal with all 1,800 tables coming out of, uh, out of CSI. The other great thing about the solution are our people. We've got great people. Uh, our people support, or on the support line, average over eight years of experience with the software. So they know the software inside and out. So when you have a question, pick up the phone, call your favorite support rep, they answer the questions immediately and you get on with business. They also know SiteLine because they help build many of the reports in, this, in the SiteLine report library. We have a report library. It used to be about 80 reports. It's probably 250 now uh, of reports that we've built for various users that do everything from costing to bills of material to invoices, you name it. Uh, and it's a great starting point. And sometimes you can take those reports and use them as is, or maybe it's just an example of how to do you know, multi-step reporting or whatever the case might be. We've also got a great training program. Uh, we spend one day with the administration people to build, just talk about, you know, how do you configure the environment and control security? The training class for the average user is two days, teaching people how to do all the dragging and dropping uh, that they might need to do. And then we spend a third and fourth day with those users, just kind of in what we call a workshop, building the production reports for, uh, for, cyber, for Sightline. Now, I had a question come in about uh, doing costing and roll up uh, to a future cost basis. So yeah, you can do all that kind of with, with cyber query. Uh, and uh, hold on a second. Okay, I need to there, send that to voicemail. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Let's see. And okay, well, I've got another customer a question. We're multi-tenant, multi-site, CSI 10, APRs are rule of the DB. Do we have a large data warehouse? Could your system access both? The answer is yes. So we can pull, you know, we can read data out of your data warehouse. We can read it live. As a matter of fact, some people have described cyber queries like a virtual data warehouse. Bring what you want into your data warehouse. And, uh, you know, we'll just cover that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we can read your data warehouse, but we can virtually go out and access the live data. So you don't need to bring everything into your, into your warehouse. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, I'll try to get more back to you. Okay. Next slide. Here's the architecture slide that I want to talk about. So starting down here at the bottom, all the user needs is a browser from the browser. 
They're going to connect to the cyber query dictionary. It's probably going to be a Windows server uh, based upon their profile. And that profile can be controlled by user ID or by Active Directory group. You know, one user may see, you know, one table or may see one site. Uh, another user connecting to the same server may see multiple sites or multiple tables or multiple companies. They may or may not see uh, the cloud. Again, it's all controlled by users. But cyber query can go out there and ask, access data from the cloud alone. It could access on-prem and the cloud combined. It might be accessing data from the cloud and Salesforce and SAP or CPQ or Infor CRM. Again, any data you want cyber query to access, it can do. Now, an important point, cyber query is read only. So you don't have to worry about users uh, messing up any of the data they might be accessing. Uh, and then users may or may not have access to ECQ data marts and cubes. Again, it's all based on profile. There's also a complete scheduling system and macro capability that surrounds the entire product. So you can build a job that runs the first day of every month that uh, also, uh, you know, that, you know, that goes out there and generates 50 financial statements. The accountants look at those statements and say, oh, we forgot to do this or we need to do that. They go back into Sightline or CSI, enter whatever transactions they need to, but then come back to Cyber Query, click that button again, and regenerate their 50 statements. So again, it, it'll help you close much quicker and just fair, very fast and very efficient. Okay, last slide. If you like what you see, we'll just send you a link to download the software. We'll actually install the software for you, build the dictionary, and we like to ask you for a couple of what we call proof of concept reports. So, so if you got some reports from uh, you know where, uh, give them to us. We'll show you how easy we can do very complex reporting in CyberQuery. Uh, we'll do another session for you, showing you CyberQuery with your data. Then we just go away, let you play with the software for 30 days. If you like it, you keep it. If you don't, send it back to us. And we do all of this at no cost. So again, that's what we mean by the, the ECQ, or cyber query test drive. Okay, I'm gonna get out of PowerPoint. And if you have any questions, again, please submit them. Uh, and I'm gonna actually, let's jump into the software now. I'm just gonna go into my browser here. Whoops, not that one. I'm gonna go here. Let's see, I think, there, I got it right there. Okay, so I've just logged in. So I'm gonna log into the software. Now my environment's kind of busy. Just cause I can show you data from Infor, Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, Glovia, you name it. We're obviously gonna go into Infor. Under Infor, we support all their major ERPs, whether it's Bonn and LN, Sightline, M3, Lawson, BPIX, SXE, PRMS, you name it, we support them all. So again, we're gonna focus here on Sightline. Now, not every user that comes into the CyberQuery is gonna see every module. Matter of fact, most users are just gonna see Launchpad. CyberQuery is where people go to build reports. We have both a client server version of CyberQuery and a full web-based version called CyberQuery HTML. Uh, command line, we just use during installation. Dictionary manager is where you maintain the dictionary environment. So if you wanna change you know, column headers or mask or whatever, you do it at the dictionary level. Uh, queue directors, the scheduling package, and it lets you schedule anything, not just CyberQuery, but anything on your, on your server. Uh, and then CQ publishes the module that lets you take reports out of CyberQuery or CyberQuery HTML and move them to the Launchpad. But just to show you what the Launchpad is going to look like, let's go there first. Now, remember, this is all customizable by use, your own logos, color schemes, graphics, tree structure. And again, I can, if I click on finance, I can say, let's go look at financial statements. Here's a real simple financial dashboard. And these are all kind of part of that standard report library. But again, this one's showing, uh, you know, income in pink, owner's equity in green. That blue line is return on equity by month. And again, a user comes in here anytime they want. They just click on any of these lines or, or bars. This drills down, generates an income statement. But again, a user, they can at any point in time, they, you know, want to Excel. They want to export it to Excel. PDF, HTML, or CyberQuery format. But again, users just from their browser come in here and they go click. 
and CyberQuery is going to drill down and say, okay, you know, here for that $88,000, you know, here it is broken down by ledger account. And again, I can go click, click, click to drill down as far as I want to go. So the end users, all they need is a browser and the ability to click. Okay, let's go over here. We'll look at another real simple dashboard in the sales area. So here's a sales dashboard. And again, these dashboards are just HTML pages in this case. Um, so they can be emailed out. They can be put on your own intranet site. Uh, again, because it's just HTML. But a user comes in here. Well, let's see. First of all, this is showing revenue by year by month. Here's margin by year by month. You know, here's revenue versus margin, margin percentage line over time. But again, a user comes in here and they go click and they can immediately go someplace or they can pop open a menu that says, okay, do you wanna look at details for this month or do you wanna see year to date? I'm gonna choose year to date. I just go click, system goes out there and runs another query that shows me sales by salesman for, the, for that particular time period. If I have a question about, okay, what's going on with Adam Wood and his customers, I just click that arrow in front of Adam's name, and now it expands Adam's sales out by customer. And again, I can come in here and just go click on any of these blue values and drill down and see exactly what's going on. I can right mouse click, dump it into Excel or whatever. But again, it's that easy for the end users to navigate. Now, as you publish reports to the Launchpad, again, you can make them visible. Uh, you can allow people to run them. You can allow people to clone. Clone means make a copy and then edit that copy. You could, although you probably don't want to, allow somebody to actually edit a published report. Uh, this fourth option over is what we call subscribe. Subscribe lets the end user pull the reports to their desktop. It basically designed to get IT out of the business of having to push reports to the end users. So for example, the end user can come in here and say, okay, I like this report. I want to start receiving it after this time on this date. And then every X number of minutes, hours, days, weekdays, weeks, months, et cetera, uh, going forward. They can also say, hey, don't send me the report if there's no qualifying record. So you can set it up as an alert send it to this email address and send it to me as a HTML5 document, text, Excel, PDF, whatever, whatever format you want. Just pick it like that. Okay. So that is what, you know, an end user would see in the launchpad. So let's actually go into uh, CyberQuery here. Um, okay. Before I go there, another question about uh, remote access and single sign-on. CyberQuery supports them all. So if you've got users coming in, uh, you know, basically, as long as a user can get through your firewall, they can they can log in. So we do support single sign-on, um, and there's all ways, all different ways of formatting how users come in and what users can see. And and back in the launchpad you know, not everybody's going to be able to see that finance directory, or they're not going to be able to see within finance, the AP or the AR directories or the a given report in those areas. So you can secure all the way down to who can see which reports, who can run reports, um, and even which tables and fields people can see if they can, if they can build reports. So very extensive security. Okay, I'm going to go into cyber query. I'm going to maximize my screen here. Now, uh, we're going to build a couple of reports, but uh, the wizard pops up and says, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to build a list report? That's good old rows and columns. Do I want to build a summary or a cross-tab or pivot table-like report? I can build plots or charts of any type, labels of any size and format, or I can start with an existing inquiry and modify that. We're going to build these from scratch to show you how easy it is to use CyberQuery. So let's do a list report first. I'm going to go in here and uh, we're, we're currently looking at what we call the native viewpoint. It says native down here. This is showing your, your native table names. Now, I'm actually looking at a Sightline 8 dictionary. Uh, but the only difference that a user sees between 8 and 9 uh, or 10 is that rather than the table being called job, 
as it is in eight, it's going to be called job underscore MST in nine or not job item, but job item master. Uh, you, you kind of get where I'm going with this. So the only difference from the from the cyber query per perspective between nine and you know eight and below and then nine and above is the introduction of the underscore MST that Sightline did uh, back in, in with Sightline nine. Anyhow, so notice that I can see every table I want. I've just typed in here this filter to say, okay, just show me the job tables. But every table, whether it's job tran, job route, job, they're all in there. And again, you can set up security to hide tables or hide fields from given users. But I want to show you what this end user viewpoint does, because again, this is kind of nice, you know, especially for uh, people like me, accounting people. Uh, you know, we don't know all the tables um, and we don't know the naming construction, you know, for Sightline. But I'm going to come in here. I switched over to the end user viewpoint and I typed in here the word CUST, C-U-S-T. So here are all the tables that have C-U-S-T in them, either in the name or in the description. But so if I click on that table called customer address, the technical people in the audience know, you know, there is no table in Sightline called customer address. That's really the cust adder table. So what CyberQuery does with this end user viewpoint is just give you a more intuitive interface uh, for these table names. Uh, likewise, if I click on customer order, there's no table called customer order. That's the good old CO or CO master table. Again, the end user viewpoint just makes it more intuitive for the non-technical people to get in there and build reports. Okay, for my example, I want to go look at the item master. I'm just going to come over here and double click on item. To build a report, all you do is pick a starting point and then you say, okay, I want this field and you can drag and drop or you can double click. So there's item, item description. Here's unit of measure. I want to get my product code. I want to get my PMT code. If you want to resequence, you go click, drag, drop. Uh, I want to bring in here, uh, unit cost, and now I want to bring in quantity on hand. But I don't know where quantity on hand lives in Sightline or CSI. I'm just going to come into the, my filter, type in the word hand, H-A-N-D. The system looks through my dictionary and says, OK, you've got four related tables that have a field uh, that's got the word hand in there. I'll say, OK, I think it's this item warehouse where I want to go. Let's click the plus sign. Oh, yeah, there's the field. I want to go quantity on hand. I go click, drag, drop. And now notice, I mean, here's the most important part of the demonstration. CyberQuery did not ask me how to go from my item master to my item warehouse file. Uh, it already knows how to do the join. I just click and drag from any field uh, and CyberQuery will figure out and actually write the syntax to do the join uh, you know, out there going against the SQL Server database or against the, uh, the QDBs if you're using CSI. Um, I can add, add other fields. Here's warehouse code. I'm going to drag that up. I'm going to put it uh, right in front of quantity on hand. And I can keep clicking and dragging and adding more fields. I'm going to say that's good enough for right now. I'm just going to click next. Okay, the system says, do you want to sort in the report? I'll say, yeah, let's sort it by item. I'm going to click next again. The system says, do you want to select? I'll say, yeah, let's say I'm going to double click on item. And I could say, I only want uh, fields where table or description contains something or is less than, less than or equal to. Uh, you can kind of see from this list, because we support so many different databases, we support pretty much every comparison operator or, or Boolean operator known to mankind. So you can do contains, does not contain, matches, does not match, is like, is not like. Again, you can do them all. In my example here, I'm not even going to worry about selecting. I'm just going to say, no, nah, don't worry about it. Say finish. So the system goes out there, runs the report. If you look in the bottom part of your screen, you can see we just, we read 53,000 rows and we generated 1,100 pages of output. So again, the software is fast. Um, so this is the main screen in the reporting environment. Uh, the column, the first column over here on the left is the view into the data dictionary. Uh, 
And what I'm going to do, so I've got my dictionary here on the left. I've got my selection criteria on the right. And then the main part of the report, uh, the main body of the screen is the report template. And all I do is I click and drag from my dictionary back into my report. So for example, if I wanna bring in family code, I just click in my dictionary and type an F. Here's family code. I'm gonna go click, drag, and just drop it right there. So again, it's that easy to bring in new data. You just go click and drag and it's, it's back in there. Okay, anytime you want, anytime you have a question, all you do is a right mouse click. Right mouse click is gonna tell you all of your options for that particular column or field. So I can delete it, move it to the parking lot, which is that lower left-hand corner. I can insert a copy, uh, change the selection list. I can really do anything I want. In my case, I wanna delete. I'm just gonna say delete and that column's gone. Uh, I can also highlight multiple columns. So I'm gonna hold down my control key and highlight unit cost and quantity on hand. Do a right mouse click. And I'm gonna say, I could do group or concatenate. I could add those two columns together. I could subtract them. And I could subtract the first from the second or the second from the first. I can multiply or I can divide. In my case, I'm gonna multiply. So now I've got a new column called quantity, uh, unit cost times quantity on hand. I'm gonna double click on that column header. I'm gonna change that header to be uh, extended cost. And uh, it will make it uh, all caps. We'll say, okay, and there we go. And the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna highlight, do a right mouse click. I'm gonna say, I don't need to see eight decimal places. So I'm going to my item properties and say, okay, this is numeric. And really all I wanna see are two decimal places. Just check that box. I can change that value to anything I want, but I'll go with two for right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna do a right mouse click and I'm gonna say, sort this column descendingly. So we get our most expensive items up at the top of the report. So right there, I'll say, okay. And there we go. So now we're seeing this report sorted descendingly by extended cost. And I can look at that and say, okay, it looks great. Or I might say, oh, I know what my, uh, you know, my controller, uh, she doesn't want to see everything. She only wants to look at the purchased items. I highlight uh, a purchased or a P, do a right mouse click and say, only get me items equal to P. So again, just left mouse, right mouse. That's all I need to do. Um, and as you look, I mean, it's very intuitive interface. You'll also notice that the, all of the icons look a lot like Excel. So people that know Excel are going to pick up CyberQuery very quickly. Uh, here's the most popular button in the product. That's the uh, undo button. And it's unlimited levels of undo and redo. Uh, anytime I'm running the report, I can click that stop button and say, OK, SQL. I've got enough rows. So you don't need to read. 30 million rows just to start laying out a report, read a few thousand, say, you know, stop, go back and make sure everything's looking good. So that, that's really nice. Uh, next icon over is my schedule icon. Uh, if I click here, I can actually schedule this report. It's gonna say, okay, Jim, you gotta save this report first. I'll call this uh, report, we'll call it CSI underscore zero zero one. Okay, so now it's saved. It says, okay, which batch queue do you want to use? I'm just going to use that one called CQCS. It says, do you want to submit for immediate execution? I'm going to say, no, I want to submit with a pattern. Uh, I, want to, I want this report to run at, we'll make it 12 o'clock a.m. Starting, it'll just do tomorrow morning. And we want it to repeat every, I could have it go, you know, every two uh, days or weekdays, months, whatever. Or I could also say, hey, I want it to run just during my working hours and I want it to repeat every four hours. So we could do that. I'll go back here. Uh, and we could say, and do it until, maybe we'll do it until the end of June. So if I click right there, go through the 30th, we'll say, okay. And now we can schedule it. I'm not actually gonna schedule it, but again, it's that easy even for an accountant like myself to schedule a job. 
And all these jobs can be used in conjunction with each other. So you can schedule a job and have the output be Excel and have the uh, report sent in Excel to a distribution list in your email or just an individual in your email. You can have the output be HTML or PDF or a comma separated value file and again, be emailed out. So again, all those buttons can be used in conjunction with each other. Uh, so just kind of working our way across, we're in the visual editor. That lets me do all the dragging and dropping. And if you look closely, you'll see a scroll next to the cursor. If I, I'm gonna skip over the drill, we'll come back to the drill in a second. But if I click on the paintbrush, paintbrush lets me control font style and color. So I can bold that column, I can make it bigger, uh, I can make the background color, uh, you know, you'll make it a, uh, oh, here we'll do green. That might look kind of ugly, but we'll go with it. Uh, we can also come in here and say, I want to conditionally highlight something. So again, with the paintbrush next to my cursor, I'm going to come in here and say, okay, uh, anytime I've got quantity on the hand of a thousand units or more, I want to add a highlight. So I'm going to say if quantity on hand is greater than or equal to a thousand units, Let's make the background color, I'll go with yellow. And again, I'll make, and I'm gonna apply it to the whole line. So we'll say, okay, uh, and there we go. So real quickly, we can spot anytime we've got quantity on hand greater than a thousand units. And so again, that's the paintbrush. And you can have multiple layers going on at the same time. Uh, next icon over is the camera. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get rid of uh, that logo, just delete that one. And I'm gonna do a right mouse click. I'm gonna add a picture for my computer. And we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna, well, let's just pick a logo here. We'll pick one from, I'm gonna scroll down here. Uh, uh, here we'll use Wittern. And I'm gonna shrink that logo down. Uh, they're also a CSI in the cloud customer of CyberQuery but just drop that in there. And now we can make that logo part of the default page header. So it appears on, uh, on every report we generate. Uh, next icon over is my, uh, my border tool. Let me click right here. I'm gonna do a right mouse click, go to my border properties, and I'm gonna make this report look striped. Again, this may be more colors than we really wanna see. Let's make it uh, you know, kind of alternate between a a light blue and a white. We'll say, okay, okay, and there you go. Again, maybe not the prettiest report, but uh, it, it kind of serves the purpose in the next example. If I click on Excel uh, here, uh, it's gonna export this report into Excel for me. And it's going to pass to Excel all of the coloring, all the formatting, everything except the logo is going to pop up here uh, in my, uh, my version of Excel. So here's that report. And one thing I wanted to show you in Excel, if I go down all the way down here to the bottom uh, and scroll down a little bit more, notice these totals, they come in as a function. It's not just a printed value in the report. So again, a great Excel interface. And in addition, we have an Excel add-in I'm gonna show you real quickly. I'm gonna scroll back up here to the top. I'm just gonna click right, right there. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna click on Cyber Query, open the Cyber Query ribbon. I'm gonna say, let's insert a report. I'm gonna insert a report from my local machine. Uh, it's gonna make me log in. And I'm gonna say, I wanna pick up something from Sightline. So let's go next. And I'm gonna just scroll down here and say, let's pick up, here's a sales detail report. Now, the system asked me a few questions. It says, okay, for the input parameters, do you want those to appear in the spreadsheet itself or come in via a separate pop-up a separate pop -up dialog? I like it in the spreadsheet, so I'm gonna choose that option. It says, do you wanna include a refresh time? I'll say yes. It said, do you wanna also include the server information? I say no, but I am gonna say, I want my Excel formatting to take precedence over the cyber query report format. So I go click, 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 hit finish. System goes out there, drops in my default the input fields, runs the report. If I scroll over here to the right now, you can see, I mean, here's that report coming in from, uh, from Sightline. I'm gonna scroll over a little bit more uh, and I'm just gonna click right there. I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna say, let's insert 
just do an auto sum. So there I've, I've summed those three columns, hit end or say, okay, that's great. I'm just gonna drag this calculation down here a bit. But now this data is Excel. So I can do anything I want at the Excel level, You know, whether I'm doing a forecast or whatever kind of model, I can do it there. I can also say well, real simply here, let's write justify that number. I can put in a column header. But here's what I wanna show you. I'm gonna go back in. Notice this report right now is showing company 100 through 525. I'm gonna change 525 to only be 100. And if you look here in this column N, you can see that we've got all kinds of company numbers. When I hit return, which I'll do right now, it goes out there, refreshes the data. And now all we're looking at is company 100. But you'll notice that the calculation continues to work as I built it at the Excel level. Okay, here we go. Uh, do we wanna save this report? I'm gonna say no. Let's build a brand new report from scratch. I'm gonna build a sum report this time. And you can kind of count the keystrokes, how long it takes to build this report. So I said sum, I'm gonna go look at my sales data. And I wanna use this, uh, this one called my sales lines. So I'm just gonna grab that one right there. And I wanna summarize a field called amount. I'm just gonna double click on amount. And I'm gonna say, I wanna summarize amount by, by means down the page. I'm gonna go down the page by, my customer address using name. And I wanna go across, I'm gonna go across by my order date. Now, as you look closely, you'll see some little icons here. So a red nine means that column is a numeric value. A blue A means it's an alphanumeric field. Uh, a little thing that looks like a calendar, that means it's a date. If you see a calendar with a clock on it, that means it's a timestamp. So here's an example of where cyber queries automatically created this date field from one of those sightline timestamps. And I can use either one, but I'm gonna use that uh, date field. Just double click on it. And you notice we're gonna do year and total. But again, anytime you have any questions, just right mouse click, look at properties. And in this case, it's sorting by year. I could say, well, I wanna sort by year and quarter or maybe by year and month or I can do it by ISO year and ISO week. In my case, I'm just gonna go back and default to year, keep it simple. We'll say, okay, and let's just say finish. I go click, 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 finish. And that quickly, I've got my report. So here are my customers' sales over the last three years. And from here, I can say, okay, that's great. Uh, or I can say, no, I wanna bring in more data. For example, I might say, let's bring in here from, a, from my item master, uh, let's go out here and I'm going to bring in my uh, product code or my item description. I'll go click, drag, and just drop it in here. So now we're looking at sales by customer, by product, by year and amount. If I were to take product and put it in front of name, then we're looking at sales by product, then by customer, by year and amount. So uh, this is why some people have said cyber queries like an Excel pivot table on steroids where every field in Sightline or CSI is available to your pivot table. Okay, I'm gonna hit my delete button just to delete description because I wanna show you one more thing. Uh, here is a little Excel spreadsheet I built with email addresses in here. So I'm gonna just drag email address from that Excel table into my report. So first column's coming from Sightline, second column's coming from Excel, and then back to Sightline for the rest of the report. So again, it's, it's that easy to do. I'm gonna get rid of Excel because I wanna show you that drill. Uh, yeah, I'll show you drill. So I can click here and drill down into a given cell. I can highlight a couple of columns. Oops, I gotta click on the drill first. So again, drill down to a cell or I'm gonna highlight a couple of columns, do a right mouse click and say, I wanna restrict to just those two even years. So there we go. I'm gonna click on do. I could do the same thing with rows. So I can say BP was shipped to, BP all, all roles and Steve at Big Mart are really the same thing. I'm gonna create a new category, call it BP, say okay. And now those three columns or those three rows are consolidated down into one. Again, I'm gonna click undo and we're back. Um, I can also just drill down into a given cell. I'm gonna drill down into that Lowe's headquarters 2016. I do a right mouse click and say drill down. 
and I can pick anything I've used before, or I can also say, I want to grab a new item. And again, I'm going to just, it opens that little window for me. I'm going to go back over to my general item data, grab description again, and just drag it in here. Looks like I had it there before, so I'm going to pull it out. So I'm going to, on description, just say, okay. So now we've drilled down where year equals 2016, customer name equals Lowe's headquarters. And I've drilled down by product. I can say, okay, that's great. Or I'm going to drill down again. Looks like we sold a lot of cabinets. Let's right mouse click and say drill down by order number this time. So this time we've drilled down by all of the above, including cabinet. Here are our orders. And I can say that's great. Or maybe I you know, now want to bring in here, let's scroll down here and say, let's bring in here. I'll bring in price. I'm just going to grab price, go click, drag. I'll drop it right after order number. I can grab quantity, family, anything I want. I just click and drag, and it's that easy to do. So with that, I'm now going to do my uh, undo, undo, undo. Because I want to show you one more thing. I can build input fields and selection criteria, but let's just convert this report to a chart. I'm just going to click up there on my chart. And the system converts it to a graphic. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to get rid of the year and total. Uh, get rid of that for right now. So here's sales by customer. Uh, I can click here and say, well, I don't want to see it as a bar. I can change it to a horizontal bar or a cluster bar, line area, uh, pie. Maybe I want to show it as a donut. I can now take each section of these donuts and allow users to click and drill down. I can take this object now and, and publish it to a dashboard. Um, and we can do all that. I'm, I'm, and I'm afraid we're running out of time, but I'd, I'd love to show you more. Uh, so if you'd like to see maybe a more detailed demonstration, or again, if you'd like to get a copy of the software, just answer the, uh, the survey you see at the end of the, uh, this, uh, this demonstration, or feel free to email me. Here's my email information. Uh, or feel free to even give me a call. Uh, it's been nice having so many people on this uh, session today. And thank you for your time. And again, if you like a link to the recording, we can provide that as well. But thank you very much.